Lord. <laughs> Hi guys. It is a spectacularly gorgeous moonlit night here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here at the opening bell of Labor Day weekend where we have a full house at Bugs in a Jar Farm. It is after 10 o'clock and I'm finally finding a little Peace and quiet to do what I do every Friday, and it is Friday, September 2nd, 2022, and I have managed to get a piece of sawdust in my eyeball that I have keep thinking I get it out, and then it finds its way back in, so I am spending my life fighting a piece of sawdust as the planet collapses, so maybe I can read this. Uh, since it is Friday, we do what we do every Friday here at Collapse Chronicles. And that is check in with our old friend, Rhett Butler, and the boys and girls over at mongabay.com for our weekly ecological meltdown roundup uh, rant and I don't know how long these batteries have so I'm just gonna we're gonna dive right in and all right we're gonna surprisingly enough we're gonna start in the Brazilian Amazon what is going on in the Brazilian Amazon rainforest here the opening bell of September 2022 Crimes against the Amazon reverberate across Brazil. Crimes associated with illegal logging, mining, and other illicit activities in the Brazilian Amazon are being felt in 24 of Brazil's 27 states, a new report shows. Records of more than 300 federal police operations between 2016 and 2021 show that crimes such as tax evasion, money laundering, corruption, and of course wildlife trafficking are reverberating far beyond the rainforest itself. Deforestation is at the center of the criminal economy in the Amazon. That's exactly what it is. It is a criminal economy led by one of the biggest planet-eating criminals on planet Earth, Jair Bozo Nero, the head mobster, the, you know, the, the leader of the pack the number one uh, criminal against the planet, Jair Bozo Nero. No shit. Uh, so deforestation, you know, being promoted by Bozo Nero is at the center of the criminal economy in the Amazon, driving four main illegal activities, logging, mining, occupation of public lands and environmental violations associated with agriculture. Nearly half of the police operations investigated crimes that occurred inside protected areas in the Amazon, including 37 indigenous territories, don't know if you go on the full story uh, how many of these more than 300 investigations by the federal police under the single biggest criminal in Brazil's history resulted in any sort of prosecution. Do I vaguely remember hearing two, that there have been two prosecutions under Jair Bozo Nero's watch? But uh, it, it is open season. It is the Old West. It is Babylon. It is Mad Max. It is every man for themselves in the Brazilian Amazon. The Brazilian Amazon, that, that obviously, guys, it, 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 it's, I'm going to use the F-bomb. It's fucked. It's completely fucked. 
Anyway, that's the state of the Brazilian Amazon air, the opening bell of September 2022. So we're going to go from Brazil to where do you think the world's dirtiest river, according to one account? That would be in Java. Java. A national program to transform Java's Saterum River into a source of drinking water expires in 2025. Yeah. A reforestation program in uplands near the source of the river is drawing on community volunteers. Yes. Uh, good luck on turning the world's dirtiest river into a source of drinking water. That's gonna happen. Okay, what is going on with biomass? What is the latest greenwashing horse shit surrounding biomass? You know, talking about burning the planet to save the planet instead of digging up the planet to save the planet this is you know Bill McKibben a big big fan of biomass so now what they're doing is mixing in biomass otherwise known as dead trees otherwise known as formerly alive trees and they're now mixing the dead trees in with the coal and calling it co-firing. Biomass co-firing loopholes put coal on open-ended life support in Asia. Over the past 10 years, some of Asia's coal-dependent, high-emitting nations have turned to biomass co-firing, which is burning coal and biomass together to make electricity to reduce CO2 emissions on paper, to reduce CO2 emissions on paper and reach energy targets. But biomass, you know, and being burned with coal still generates high levels of CO2 at the smokestack and adds to dangerous global warming. In South Korea, <clears throat> you know, just, just for one example, uh, in South Korea, renewable energy credits are given for biomass co-firing. There you go. Uh, flooding the market, therefore making other renewables like wind and solar less profitable. All those subsidies for imported biomass have decreased in recent years. Increased domestic, you know, Asian biomass, meaning cutting down trees to save the planet, is likely to continue fueling co-firing uh, projects. What is going on over there in... In Japan, uh, in Japan, currently biomass co-firing is used to make coal plants seem less polluting in the near term. Yes. Uh, In Indonesia, the government plans to implement co-firing at 52 coal plants across the country by 2025. Yes, this initiative will require, according to experts, quote, nothing less than the creation of a large-scale biomass production industry, which is another way of saying a large-scale industry of cutting down rainforest in 
Asia to burn with coal since the United Nations and Bill McKibben and all of these clueless moron greenies uh, want us to believe uh, that it makes any damn difference whether we, we, we burn down the planet to save the planet or we dig up the planet and burn it. It, it, it is greenwashing crap. Biomass burning is every bit is, is bad for the planet, is burning coal. There's plenty of studies out there that I've reported on that biomass burning is in fact dirtier than coal when you look at the entire lifetime of the project. This is unadulterated horseshit being promoted by everyone from Bill McKibben to the United Nations. It is a bright green in your face lie. They are a bunch of lying sacks of shit. Is there anybody who does not understand this, that anybody promoting biomass burning, be it Bill McKibben or the United Nations, is a greenwashing, lying sack of shit? Okay, next story. I was... Really wanted to. Last night I interviewed uh, Robert Jensen and I really was tempted to get off on the bright green lie rant, but good God, we would have gone off and spent our entire time. Uh, uh, I would love to get a further opinion uh, from uh, Professor Robert Jensen on uh, the, the absolute a bright green lie of biomass burning. Anyway, enough of that greenwashing crap. Okay, what's going on in the Mekong River and I guess River Valley? So while they're burning the tr while they're cutting down and burning the trees all over South Asia, what's going on over there along the Mekong? Mining the Mekong. There you go. They're just digging up them. I guess because there's no water in it, they can go in there and dig it up. Mining the Mekong. Land and livelihoods lost to Cambodia's thirst for sand. Sand mining by politically connected corporations has been blamed for the literal collapse. We're taught this is a genuine chronicle of a literal collapse of river banks along the Mekong and Basak rivers in Cambodia. Affected residents say they have lost their homes and their livelihoods based on fishing and tourism as a result of the mining, but see no positive changes or huh. They see no huh. No huh hope for justice. Alright, someone finally agreeing they see no hope. There is no hope for justice. Anybody thinking they're going to go up against some big ass politically connected sand mining corporation. Good luck. The government denies that the dredging is responsible for the erosion. Hmm. With one senior official saying that the dredging actually helps stabilize the riverbanks. A claim that scientists say is a myth. It is a lie. It's not a myth. It is a bold-faced lie by a government completely in the hands of the planet-eating corporatocracy. The Cambodian government and the corporations that run them do not give a shit 
that Cambodians' houses are falling in the river and people are drowning. They don't care. Okay, here's a hilarious knee slapper in uh, Manga Bay's YouTube video of the week with the comical title Restoring Mangroves in the Philippines. After that, uh, we're going to have Rhett Butler come and film uh, Sancho Panza Restoring Chipmunks at Bugs in a Jar Farm. Anybody believes who, that they are restoring mangroves in the Philippines, I have a little dog here to convince you that he is restoring the chipmunk population at Bugs in a Jar Farm. It is a big, fat lie. Rhett Butler knows this. Next. Okay. Well, I don't know whether... You know, sometimes I don't know whether to hit the bullshit detected button or the no shit Sherlock. This is or the no shit Sherlock button. This is one of those cases. Small conservation areas provide large benefits for biodiversity. Huh. Well, you know, I, I, I do agree that small conservation areas provide benefits, you know, like, like here in the U.S. for things like raccoons and possums and squirrels and maybe coyotes and foxes. You know what I'm saying. I, I'm talking the common animals that uh, the, omni the omnivores, the opportunist. Uh, yeah, but, but, but to act like, you know, these small acreage places, while, yeah, it's good for chipmunks, not so good for elephants. Okay, what's going on in Indonesia? Do you believe that Indonesia is risking unraveling environmental laws? I yes, uh, <laughs> well, y y y y you know, the question, you know, asking an Indonesian government official, when did you begin unra uh, unraveling environmental laws is kind of like, when did you, what's the old joke, when did you stop beating your wife or start beating your wife? There are no environmental laws in Indonesia. You cannot unravel something that does not exist. We need to get a little, I'm, I'm going to start to get a little more honest on the Manga Bay thing. Rhett Butler knows as well as I do there are no environmental laws in the country of Indonesia and you cannot unravel something that is not raveled. Alright, but here's the official story. Indonesia's plan to revise its outdated criminal code could lead to a systematic weakening of existing environmental laws, experts warn. Hmm. The latest draft of the code contains provisions that would make it more difficult to prosecute environmental crimes, such as dumping toxic waste into rivers and setting forest fires. Hmm. Yes. Experts note that it makes punishment more lenient and lets companies off the hook, while potentially, potentially making it easier to prosecute environmental defenders. Yes. The experts 
have called on the Indonesian government to go back to the drawing board and ensure that environmental crimes are treated as the extraordinary crimes that they are. Sancho Panza. Sancho, when are you going to go back to the drawing board and realize that crimes against chipmunks are the extraordinary crimes that they are? Okay, if you want to see an Indonesian government official going back to the drawing board, okay, to make sure environmental crimes are treated as the extraordinary crimes that they are, I want you to look at this dog. And this is how, you know, how concerned he is about treating crimes against chipmunks. This is how much anybody in Indonesia gives a damn about the environment. They want the money. They don't care about anything but the money. Okay. Here, here, here's one that I can, can certainly believe. Brazilians are not familiar with the Amazon. <laughs> yes. Oh, this is the daughter of Chico Mendez, Angela Mendez. Okay. I might have to go listen to this interview with Angela Mendez. Uh, there you go. Mendez, um, you know, in the, in the interview, Mendez reflects on the culture of impunity, the culture of impunity that allowed the masterminds of her father's murder to evade justice, which she says persists in Brazil today. Yes. Uh, I love this. But she also holds a... She also... This is Chico Mendez's daughter. Yeah, right. Also holds out, uh, 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 holds out, uh, 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 say that really fast, right? holds out uh, uh, hope for change, noting that Brazilians are largely concerned about the environment. I was just reading this story in the mainstream media that if an environmentalist uh, you know, running for office in this year's Brazilian elections basically wants to commit suicide. If a politician wants to commit suicide in Brazil, they come out pro-environment. For a Brazilian politician on any level to come out and put the environment before making money, that is a clear path to oblivion. Brazilians do not give a damn about the environment. Brazilians give a damn about making money. Okay. Let's see. Here is shark fishing in the Maldives. Did you believe that a blanket ban on shark fishing in the Maldives does not enjoy support from reef fishers? Huh. Imagine that. Anyway. Protecting global forests with a limited budget. There you go. Anyway, I'm not going to get into that. 
but I I anyway. Uh, okay, I've been reading this in the mainstream media. This is Manga Bay's coverage of the water crisis in Mexico as climate change hits northern Mexico's Mexico officials look to solve the water crisis. Water scarcity in northern Mexico has gotten worse over the last several years. Do you think so? The crisis is the result of a combination of declining rainfall, increasing deforestation uh, of natural aquifers, and government mismanagement of climate change readiness policies. Yes, and so what are they doing? Officials are investing in new dams and aquifers to address the problem through 2050. They have also bombed the sky to make it rain and implemented temporary water cutoffs for residents in urban areas. And that's really true, I guess, in Monterey, where the taps are running dry. Okay, how do I make... Come on, scroll down. Okay. You will not believe this. More responsible forest management is needed. Oh! Okay, they're actually talking with some greenwashing planet eater lying sack of shit from the Forest Stewardship Council. Yes, the Forest Stewardship Council is widely considered the gold standard for certifying sustainable forest use. But it has frequently been criticized for failing to uphold the standards that it touts. Yes. Uh, now this part, may, may, maybe I don't uh, disagree with this. So this woman, Kim Cartensian, she does admit that while the FSC will never be the perfect system in everyone's view, meaning anyone with a brain looking into these criminals. It is still, quote, the best that can be done and provides the basis for a lot of opportunities to be created. And, I, and I'm not necessarily going to argue with the woman on this, that this unadulterated horseshit Forest Stewardship Council, which is one of the poster children of the bright green lies, it is unadulterated crap. That said, it is, it is the best that can be done on a planet completely uh, controlled by the global corporatocracy uh, taking down this planet. You know, it's like the Sancho Panza Chipmunk Stewardship Council is the best that can be done. The best that can be done is worthless. It is meaningless. It is worthless. It does nothing but virtue signal to a little bit uh, uh, of these little greeny lefties, uh, you know, going to Wegmans to, you know, to buy some plastic wrapped banana with FSC stamped on it. it, it it's crap. It, it is a bright green lie. Rhett Butler knows this as well as I do. Okay, moving on. Well, we were talking, but we started out with the Brazilian Amazon. Let's go up to the Venezuelan Amazon. I think all they did was they, they changed the word Brazil to Venezuela. Okay, wow. 
Venezuelan Amazon deforestation expands due to lawlessness, mining, and fires. Multiple recent reports show that deforestation has greatly increased in Venezuela, Venezuela's Amazonian states, largely due to, take a wild guess, come on class, illegal mining, expanded agriculture, and fires, otherwise known as humans. Multiple recent reports show that deforestation has greatly increased in Venezuela's Amazonian states largely due to humans. It is totally due to humans. It is not due to mining. It is not due to agriculture. It is not due to fire. It is due to humans. You take the humans out of the Venezuelan Amazon, you get rid of the mining. You get rid of the expanded agriculture. You get rid of the fires. Okay. And gee, where have we heard this before? Venezuelan protected areas. Venezuelan protected areas. There, there is a contradiction in terms for sure have been especially hard hit with illegal incursions and major deforestation inside Kaura, Kanema, and Yapacana National Parks. Soaring deforestation rates are blamed partly on Colombian guerrillas operating illegally within Venezuela's borders, an invasion that one report alleges has been supported by the government of Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro. There, there, there you go. This is really... Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I'm not even going to go into that propaganda. Uh, Forest loss has been well confirmed via satellite while ground truthing, I love that term, ground truthing, has been obtained via first hand accounts. Okay. Does anybody want to hear about diversifying the rice crop in Bangladesh? I do not really want to hear about that, so we're going to move on. Uh, you will not believe this. So, so this, you know, it's headlines like this, guys. That every week I say this. That this is why I am so dependent on Rep Butler to explain this to me. If it were not for Rhett Butler's tireless commitment, I would never have figured this out for myself. So let's all thank Rhett Butler for this story. Independent Watchdog confirms rampant deforestation in the Amazon. Wow! Data from Independent whatever that word means in these days, data from independent forest monitoring group Amazon has confirmed, we have confirmation, that deforestation in planet Earth's largest rainforest is on track to approach the highest level in 15 years. Amazons, you know, as opposed to the Brazilian government's monthly deforestation alert system, detected 10,781 square kilometers of forest clearing in the Brazilian Amazon between uh, over the last year. A 3% rise over the same period the year before when forest destruction reached the highest level since 2006. Do the math. 
Uh, did you realize that deforestation in the Brazilian Amazon has been on an upward trend since 2012? There you go. Does anybody want to hear an article about pigeon poop? As fascinating as I'm sure the story about pigeon poop is, we're going to move on to this next shocking story. I can't tell if that camera is so I don't know. I might have been talking to myself for 10 minutes. Well, even if the camera's on, I've been talking to myself for 10 minutes, but on or off, Brazilian miner sees indigenous land as ripe for exploration. Huh. Mining company Oxerser has filed five applications to prospect for gold inside the Pripura indigenous territory in anticipation of restrictions being lifted in October. The territory is home to two of the last three surviving pure perp cura individuals. They're down to three. Okay. I uh, you know I guess you heard about that dude, the, the man in the hole. That guy, they finally uh, he dug his last hole. So so this this tribe is down to three people. And this mining company wants to move in and, and start mining their land and not letting these three people die in peace. You, 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 you know, the territory is home to two of the last three surviving individuals who live in voluntary isolation and already face threats from invasions of their territory from illegal loggers and cattle ranchers. Uh, you know, uh, it just goes on and on. And here we go again, another one of these. I never would have figured this out if it weren't for Rhett Butler. You will not believe this, guys. I am not one. This is not the onion. This is Manga Bay. Would you believe that a Chinese mine in Indonesia poses a high risk. And this is an assessment by none other than the World Bank. An assessment by the World Bank has found indications of, quote, extreme environmental and social risk posed by a China-banked zinc and lead mine in Sumatra. Hmm. Among the identified risks are the potential for the mine's tailings dam to collapse as it would lie on a fault line, as well as the risk of acidic drainage from the dam contaminating surface and groundwater sources. Yes. Uh, there you go. And anybody who does not understand this, what this shit's being mined for is stuff like electric cars and the renewable energy transition. Jesus, uh, you will not believe this one. Delegates fail again to clinch High Seas Protection Treaty. Yes. At the close of two weeks of negotiations in good old New York, delegates from around the world failed to net consensus on a high-stakes, legally binding treaty to conserve biodiversity on the high seas. Yep, yep, yep. These areas beyond national jurisdictions comprise two-thirds of the global ocean and are a
vast, resource-rich global commons. Yet, today, there is still no comprehensive, agreed-upon framework governing resource extraction or conservation there. Uh, there you go. Can you say deep sea mining? Here is an investigation on how illegal gold from indigenous lands gets laundered in Brazil. Uh, all right, here is how the Bozo Nero agenda gets a lift from the new right in the Brazilian Congress. Yes, the rise of a new right in the Brazil's Congress that is firmly behind President Jair Bolsonaro's agenda of rolling back environmental and indigenous protections. Oh, God. According to one survey, 351 of the 513 uh, members of, you know, basically the Brazilian Congress scored unfavorably on socio-environmental issues. Among the legislation they helped draft or voted in favor of include those that weaken environmental law enforcement, favor predatory economic activities, undermine labor protections, hamper access to social benefits, and hinder agrarian reform. Yep, yep, yep. Here's a big, here's a startling statistic. Three-fourths, three-fourths of the waste in Jakarta's notoriously polluted rivers is plastic. Do you think so? Uh, so what is the chance of meeting the Paris climate goal? The absolute joke uh, laughable Paris climate goal. According to this study, we have a 0.1% chance of meeting the Paris goals. Otherwise known as a 0%, which doesn't make any difference because the Paris goals are a joke. Uh, and since, guys, I'm pretty sure I'm talking to myself, I'm just going to read the headlines. Engineers bet on a miracle. There you go. Bet on a miracle to bring Nepal's Holy River back to life. Uh, here is another planet's environmental defender, I guess, showing up dead, floating in the water. Uh, here it is. Oh, uh, God. Uh, about Cambodian fisheries. Uh, good Lord, this crap. Uh, all right. Indonesia announces plans to protect 10% of the sea by 2030. Good for them. Uh, I think I might have mentioned this already. Big Oil's capture of IPCC assessment for policymakers shakes our faith. I think we talked about that last week, but I see I have put the little dog to bed. 
he is dreaming of chipmunks. I have no idea if this camera shut off 20 minutes ago, but I'm going to shut off and call it a night because it is Labor Day weekend and I got a lot of work to do at the Bugs in a Jar Hip Camp and Airbnb. Yeah, sleepy dog. Are you sleeping on Tigger Trump? Bye, guys.